All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast. And for the final part of the show, uh, we're now going to talk about Juan Soto and uh, you know some of the recent news regarding him and uh, whether or not he's going to get traded. Um, so, obviously, uh, he's not a free agent, but he's one of the bigger names out there that you know is being talked about because you know with the Padres and their money troubles um you know they're not going to be able to afford him so you know he, he's probably I mean either he sticks around for one more year or um you know they they trade him get a lot of assets uh, and they go from there so um obviously the Padres they acquired him at the 2022 trade deadline from the Nationals, you know, he's a World Series champ with the Nationals back in 2019. Um, you know, they got to, uh, I mean, it makes sense they probably trade him before the season. You get assets for him because it, it's unlikely that they're going to, you know, retain him. Um, so Soto ranks among the best in OPS plus through age 24 in the post-war era. So that, that um, again, that just shows you, like, how great of a hitter that he is. Um you know, and they also uh, talk about, you know, similar trades, you know, regarding good young players. Um, you know, they, they were, in the article I was looking at, they were comparing it to, um, you know, with, with players with one year left on their uh, contract. Um, you know, they compared it to Jason Hayward, you know, being traded to the Cardinals in 2015, Mookie Betts being traded to the Dodgers in 2020, and then uh, Francisco Lindor traded to the Mets um, in 2021. So, and Jason Hayward used to be, you know, really good with the Braves. Um, you know, Mookie Betts, obviously, one of the best players in baseball. Francisco Lindor, you know, has been, you know, he's been good for the Mets. Um, you know, he was de definitely put together a good season in 2023. Um, so, also, they talk about the potential fits for Soto. They list the Mets, they list the Cubs, the Giants, the Blue Jays, and the Yankees. Um Again, I feel bad for the Giants. Well, not too bad, but somewhat. Because it's just they're in on all these big-name players, and they get none of them. They get they get no players. I mean, last year, Aaron Judge, Carlos Correa, they get none of them. You know? Um, I mean, they're supposedly in on Bellinger. I mean, you would think they're in on Otani. Um, but, I mean, they, they might end up with nothing again. So, um, but yeah, they were talking about, I saw that, you know, the Yankees and the Padres are kind of like exchanging names on, you know, what a potential deal would, um, be, and there seems to be a little bit of a holdup. It's, it seems like the Yankees are reluctant to trade one of their prospects. I think it was Drew Thorpe. Um, listen, I get it, you know, like it's not, you might not have Soto after 2024, he might go somewhere else because his intention is, I'm going to test free agency regardless. Um, so, you know, the Yankees might just have it for one year, and then that's it. But for me, I mean, you still do whatever you can to get him. Because the Yankees were not a good offensive team last year. They weren't. And they lacked left-handed bats, which is something that fans like myself have been screaming for the past several years. Where are the left-handed hitters? Um... And he would solve a lot of their problems. You know, He, they need outfielders. He's somebody that would be our starting left fielder next year. That is someone that you need to go out and get. Do whatever it means necessary. Trade your prospects. Do it. Because, you know, if the Yankees get a championship out of it and then Soto walks, it, it it's at least worth it that you at least did it. Um, But it's... um. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough, um, you know. The Yankees they have the assets to do it. They just gotta you know go out and do it. Um, you know, it's um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Of course, um, you know, and these other teams. I mean, yeah, they uh, they could maybe get them too. Um, th I mean, the Mets I think are reluctant to trade their prospects to get Soto, but, I mean, it's Juan Soto. He would solve a lot of the Mets' problems. I mean, you get rid of Vogelbach and Guillaume and you replace him with Soto, uh, yeah, you kind of go out, you kind of have to do that. And the Mets have, 
the ability to do that because they now have Steve Cohen. You know, like they could they could trade for him and sign him. Um, well, that's just you know from the money perspective. I mean, it's I mean, do the Mets have the you know the assets to get him in the minor leagues? Um, it seems like the Yankees do. It's just the Yankees might be reluctant to, you know, trade as well. Um, but, I mean, for me, I don't want to sit here and say the Yankees are going to get him. Right now, they look like the top. I mean, everyone keeps saying, well, they're the top, uh, you know, uh, suitor for Soto. And it's it's like, okay, but are they going to actually go out and get him? Um. I, yeah, it's it seems like it's trending more towards he will be traded as opposed to he won't be traded. So, and I and I think that's again, it's better for the Padres to do that because they're not gonna. It doesn't seem like they're gonna be able to retain him. So get as much as you can out of him, and go from there. Um, you know, I mean, because even if you trade Soto, you still got Machado, you still got Tatis, um, you know, you still got Bogarts for, you know, because he signed a big contract as well. Um, but, you know, they are going to be losing some guys. I mean, they lost Blake. They're going to lose Blake Snell. They're going to lose Josh Hader. You know, we're waiting to see where those guys go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the Padres, they're coming off of a disappointing season. I mean, they went 82-80, and 80, same record as the Yankees. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Padres, they need pitching. So, you know, and, and the Yankees seem like they, you know, are going to try to get this done, and, and hopefully it does happen because... It would be nice. <laughs> like, for me, I, I want that. Now, I know a lot of people don't want that because they don't want the Yankees to be good because the Yankees are not a particularly liked team. Um, you know, and that also comes with, you know, the fan base as well, which I understand. I get it. I mean, like I was talking about in the first, uh, you know, segment, how it's, I guess Yankee fans were making fun of Met fans over them getting Severino. I mean, what are we doing? I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be interesting how that you know because where does that fit in with all the free agent madness? Um, let me ask you guys this: What is gonna? I'll probably do a short on this actually, but what happens first? Juan Soto getting traded or Shohei Otani signing with a new team? Which do you think happens first? Because um, those are probably like I mean, those are the two biggest names you know that could be on new teams next year. Um, you know, and obviously we just talked about Yamamoto. I haven't really talked about Bellinger. Um, Bellinger's interesting because, you know, like Bellinger, he had a great year last year, but someone could sign him to a big contract and he could be a real disappointment. Um, and, you know, if Soto gets traded to another team and Bellinger doesn't get signed yet, is that what the Yankees pivot to? Because Bellinger could play multiple positions. He could play center field. He could play first base, left-handed bat. I mean, the Yankees saw up close, like, what he could do. I mean, he hit that monster home run when they played the Cubs, you know, during the season. So, I, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to, you know, how, I mean, what ends up happening with Soto is going to dictate, you know, what the Yankees end up doing, um, you know. Because, I mean, again, I, like I said before, we could end up with Manuel Margot and Kevin Kiermeyer. You end up with Mark Meyer instead of Yamasoto or yeah. So I um I I don't know. It's uh again just gotta wait and see, you know, what happens. Um you know all the big free agents other than Sonny Gray are not signed yet. Soto, you know, it's looking more and more like he is going to get traded. So, um again, I mean We'll see, but um, I just want something big to happen so we can talk about it. Because yeah, right now, it's all right now. This whole show really is just speculation. Well, this team could be in on him. This team could be on in in on him. You know, it's you don't know. You really have no idea. Um, but and I, and I said this. Look, it's going to be tough in the off season because there's going to be some points where it's like, what do we even talk about, other than speculation? And that's really what all this is. Because you don't know how real all this is. I mean, John Heyman's saying, yeah, the Yankees, they got a great chance to get Soto and Yamamoto. But is that going to happen? I don't know. I mean, believe me, I would be... I'd be doing cartwheels 
well, not really. But I, I mean, I, I would be over the moon if they were able to pull it off. But you got other teams that you're going to be competing with to try to get these players. So, but it it seems that way more with Yamamoto. With Soto, it doesn't. It, it seems like the Yankees. It, it's the Yankees, and then it doesn't seem like there's really like another team that has emerged yet. At least what's being reported. Because um, right now, when you see Soto, all you're seeing is, well, the Yankees are progressive, or, you know, and Padres are engaging in trade talks. They're trading names as to who could be in the deal. and But you're not really, you're not seeing any other teams that really, like, yeah, I, you know, listed the teams, you know, from what I saw online of, you know, who else is in on Soto. But, I mean, from what's being reported, you're really only seeing, like, the Yankees. But even with that, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, well, slam dunk, we're going to get him. Like, I was very confident. I should say very. I was confident that the Yankees were going to bring back Aaron Judge last year because that's a guy that the Yankees had on their team. Came through the system, you know, just won MVP, you know, 62 home runs. I, I just really did not see a world in which the Yankees did not retain Aaron Judge. And... For a brief moment, that was the case because, you know, John Heyman tweeted that uh, Arson Judge uh, is going to San Francisco. But we all were like, oh, well, that's a typo. Aaron Judge is a giant now. And that was not the case. That was not the case. Judge ended up staying a Yankee. I ended up being right. And I was happy about it because my friends were like, there's no chance he resigns with the Yankees. And I'm like, I think he's, I think he's resigning with them. And he did. But now, it's all, this offseason is, season is completely different because they're trying to trade for Soto. They're trying to, you know, sign Yamamoto. But you got you got more teams competing uh, to get Yamamoto than you do with Soto. So you get Soto and you go from there. Because I think Soto is right now the bigger need. Because um, he would solve a lot of their issues, man. Lefty bat, Yankee Stadium... People are always complaining about it. That short porch, but we got guys that, you know, are all right-handed. That, yes, can go the opposite way, but we would like to have left-handed bats. I've been saying that for a long time, as well as other Yankee fans. Get it done. Get it done. Um, but that's basically it uh, for the show today. Uh, let me know what you guys think about all the things that I talked about. Um, again, I mean, this was more just like speculation um, obviously we haven't done a show in a couple of weeks again, cause we were off. Um, so you, you know, there, there's, uh, hopefully by next week, you know, the, the ball starts rolling. We start seeing more guys getting signed, um, some big free agents, you know, maybe we get the Soto trade cause again, it looks like it's going to happen. It's just a matter of who is getting him. Um, and obviously when that all, uh, you know, unfolds we'll of course cover it um you know as we uh you know get to the winter meetings and see if anything major happens but um yeah um another show down obviously with this show every friday 12 30 p.m eastern time um you know half hour after the gsmc football podcast um so uh yeah um another uh day of streaming down and uh you know we'll see what the weekend brings you know like i said on the football podcast got big college football matchups this weekend and tonight also got a bit, another big week in the nfl nfc championship game rematch and then uh you know we'll see uh you know yamamoto gets signed maybe otani the soto get traded that's i mean just gotta wait and see um, but other than that, uh, I hope everybody enjoys the weekend. I'm going to try my best to do that as well. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, see everybody on Monday, GSMC football podcast, of course, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time every Monday through Friday. So, uh, yeah, that is all the time that we have for today. So again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always, uh, I'm your host, Kenneth Gruenfelder signing off once again, um, from the GSMC Baseball Podcast, um, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. 
Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Enjoy all the games this weekend. Hopefully, uh, you know, free agents sign with teams so we can talk about it. And until then, I will, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.